Well, it's polling day today. After over a month of a high decibel campaign, the stage is all set for a face-off between NDA and India bloc allies today. The Mahavikas Agadi and ruling Mahayuti will lock horns today as people of Maharashtra will elect representatives to the state's 288 strong assembly. A pitched electoral battle is also going to be witnessed in the state of Jharkhand where uh, the JMM-led alliance will take on the BJP. This is the second phase of polling. By polls will also be held in 15 assembly constituencies across Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Kerala and Uttarakhand today. The counting of votes will take place on the 23rd of November. Now the Battle of Maharashtra where uh, India's financial capital Mumbai is located is particularly critical for the political future of the state. In the last five years, like we know, the state has seen three chief ministers splits in two major opposition parties, multiple legal and political wars for symbols, defections and changing political formations. It's a ruling Mahayuti comprising Devendra Fadnavis led BJP, Eknath Shinde led Shiv Sena and Ajit Pawar led NCP versus opposition Mahavikas Agadi, uh, Uddhav Thakre led Shiv Sena, Congress and Sharad Pawar led NCP. Now in the Lok Sabha elections, MBA had emerged ahead of uh, the Mahayuti, 36 in seats in Mumbai, particularly important because this is where the Sena versus Sena battle is going to play out. Let's uh, go to my reporters, uh, uh, Radhika Ramaswamy and uh, Anuj, uh, uh, who are joining us uh, from Maharashtra. Uh, to you, Radhika, first, uh, this is a battle that is very important, not just uh, for Maharashtra, but also uh, for India, because uh, uh, the state of Maharashtra has seen a lot of uh, uh, political activity, a lot of, uh, uh, in the sense, a lot of uncertainty the last five years. This, uh, we are all hoping this election will show some sense of clarity to both alliances. Tell us, how is Mumbai, how is Maharashtra looking like on the, on the, on the morning of the polls? You know, I'm standing in an important constituency, which is Malabar Hill, part of South Bombay. We don't see much activity here. It's just 7 a.m. Uh, we are not seeing any long queues at the moment, but perhaps in a couple of hours, we'll see more voters. Uh, of course, this is Mumbai. People don't really wake up early. So it may take some more time for voters to really line up, queue up, especially in affluent constituencies such as Malabar Hill. This is the constituency from where uh, Piyush Goyal had won during Lok Sabha. Uh, Piyush Goyal had voted during during Lok Sabha elections. Of course, he will continue to cast his vote here. Of course, he had one from Mumbai North. He's an MP from Mumbai North. We'll expect him, uh, one of the tall BJP leaders, to be here. As far as this constituency is concerned, it's going to be Mangal Prabhat Loda, uh, the BJP leader, versus a UBT Sena candidate. So it's going to be BJP versus UBT Sena, as far as this constituency is concerned. Now, to talk about the larger picture, yes, uh, more than 30 seats as far as Mumbai is concerned, 288 constituency across the state of Maharashtra. High octane campaigns is what we saw over the last few weeks. Prime Minister Modi, Amit Shah, Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, all in the state of Maharashtra to campaign for both MV as well as Mahayuti. Yes, as you mentioned, there had been a lot of political churning, especially since 2019. We saw its after effect during Lok Sabha elections when uh, BJP uh, uh, lost, in fact, Mahayuti lost during Lok Sabha elections. Uh, there is, uh, you know, of course, it is a survival slash identity battle as far as the regional parties are concerned, which phase to split, be it the Sena or the NCP. For the national parties, this is a prestige battle, both the Congress as well as the BJP. Now, remains to be seen how things will play out. Uh, you know, we saw all kinds of allegations, counter-allegation, caste took dominance, a development pitch took dominance, and constitution also took dominance, a narrative that really worked well for the MVA during Lok Sabha elections. Not not entirely certain how things will play out at uh, this time around. Uh, we are talking about more than 4,000 candidates in fray across the state of Maharashtra. There are multiple, uh, you know, uh, important seats as far as city of Mumbai itself is concerned. We have Milind Diora who is contesting from Worli against Aditya Thakre. That's going to be a high octane battle. There is Zishan Siddiqui who switched sides and contesting from NCP Ajit Power faction, taking on uh, UBT Sena's uh, Varun Ser uh, Sardesai. And there is Nawab Malik also contesting uh, who is seeing. Uh, who is witnessing a lot of rebellion from within uh, NCP Ajit Pawar party. Devendra Fadnam is not very happy with his candidature. And of course, there are, uh, you know, as we've been talking about uh, quite a bit, especially during nominations time, uh, a lot of rebel candidates in fray, a lot of independents also in fray this time as a result of the number of parties, uh, you know, uh, in the elections. Uh, it, it's not four, it's not two, but six parties in fray. And there had been a lot of disputes as far as 
there's, you know, uh, seat allocation, candidate uh, decisions were also concerned. So as a result of which there could be a lot of confusion and chaos, uh, you know, uh, that we could see in the days to come after the results get announced. But all of that uh, remains to be seen. But at this point, of course, high octane battle in the state of Maharashtra, six big parties in fray, and it is an identity and prestige battle for both regional as well as national parties. Well, uh, Maharashtra, Radhika, like we all know, has been known for its political battles. In fact, it's known for governments that don't really last. Uh, uh, and we're hoping that finally there'll be some sense of certainty. There'll be one political formation which will actually give a sense of political stability to the state of Maharashtra. Anush, to you now, you are in that very important constituency of Thane. This is where Rav Kokri, uh, Panchpakodi, uh, this is where the uh, chief minister is going to contest. I mean, he's contesting from, he's going to come and vote there. Uh, tell us how important is Thane to the rise and uh, in some ways growth of Eknath Shinde because uh, uh, Eknath Shinde has also projected himself as this extremely accessible chief minister in contrast to what he's projecting Udav Thakre as and he is pitted against uh, uh, the nephew of his own mentor Anand Dige. Kedar Dige is contesting against him. How critical is this battle or is, is it going to be uh, is it going to be very easy for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Shinde? You know, this is the constituency where uh, Iknath Shinde will be voting. He's contesting in a constituency which is a little far off from here. Uh, you know, this falls under Mulund constituency where BJP's Mihir Kotecha will lock horns against NC, uh, INC, that is Indian National Congress's Rakesh Shetty. Now, talking about Iknath Shinde and his rise in Thani, it has been a meteoric rise for many. You know, when he took over the position of chief ministership, too many many people surprised. Uh, you know, it was, it was seen as a move, uh, not just strategic, but also a very well thought move especially from the center considering that the 40 MLAs who had come with the Shiv Sena uh, Shinde faction were very crucial for the BGP to form the government and you know he's, he's proved the fact that he is indeed a very accessible chief minister and that is not something which is a result of something which has been said time and again by the Shiv Sena leaders but has also been confirmed when you, when, you, when you go outside the bungalow of the ch chief minister's residence at every given point of time you'd find a lot of people present there when you talk to people right during rallies during campaigns during during our coverage, when you talk to people about chief ministers, one thing that you always hear about Eknath Shinde is the accessibility. He is considered to be that one leader, you know, who is who makes sure that he is present for his volunteer, who is present for his worker in the dire state of need. But his constituency is the one where Udav Thakre tried to play a very important card by pitting uh, Kedar Dige, the nephew of Anand Dige, who is the political guru of uh, Eknath Shinde against him. Although it might be seen as a, you know, as, as a key walk by many for Eknath Shinde but then this is one particular election where no result can be guaranteed till the very end and when we say that it is not just about Thani or about Mumbai okay, but even some very important seats. Ajit Pawar say like, of uh, NCP is uh, speaking. Let's listen in to what he is saying. The Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra. <laughs> कुठल्याही बाईट मध्ये असं काहीतरी वेगळा एक नवीन इशू निर्माण होईल अशा प्रकारचे कुठली गोष्ट आम्ही होऊन द्यायची नाही असं ठरवलेलं होतं अजून आता आज संध्याकाळी सहा पर्यंत वोटिंग आहे ती Okay, going across uh, to my colleague uh, Radhika, who is in conversation with China and she also a candidate this time from Mumbai Devi fighting a very challenging battle. A spirited campaign is what she has led. Radhika, to you. That's right. I am with uh, China and she who is contesting from Mumbai Devi constituency. She's just come here to vote. Uh, Ma'am, uh, so you're nice and early here. You're yeah. contesting this time. Uh, tell us about the issues that you're voting for and what do you like to say to the voters of Mumbai? of would, Malabar Hill. I would only like to say that the fundamental right that you have, which is to vote, you must exercise it because only if you vote can you criticize, only if you vote can you question. Just to be a silent spectator in the festival of democracy really doesn't make sense. And as they say in the Greek dictionary, the meaning of the word idiot is a man who did not vote. So let's not be idiots, let's come out and vote in large numbers and let's exercise our right because only then can we have a proactive government which works positively in the interest of all. Ma'am, how do you see these elections? Last time when I met you here during Lok Sabha, you came as a voter. This time, of course, you're a voter, but at the same time, you're a candidate as well. So how do you see the elections this time? 
I think I would uh, see it in the same light. The only difference being here, I am a Pradhan Sevika and there I was a voter. But having said that, I think that uh, the idea is to give back to society by good work uh, and in public service, as they always say, you know, you need to perform or perish. And I hope I am a performer in the days to come. And what are the issues you're voting for this time in the constituency here? This constituency, we've had a fantastic record uh, and obviously the MLA and the MP have, the MLA particularly has worked tirelessly. So I think that it's a foregone uh, and in that sense development one has seen, this is the best constituency in South Mumbai. Um, the kind of services which are provided as well as the infrastructure, if you look at the coastal road, the metros, uh, even the Atal Setu that connects us to the main city. Uh, the sky has been the limit and really it has been transforming the dynamics of uh, South Mumbai. But having said that, there is a lot of work that needs to happen in adjacent constituencies and especially the constituency I'm representing. And what are the changes you'd like to bring uh, to the constituencies that you're talking about? I think first cluster redevelopment because if you don't have homes, people really cannot proceed. And for women it has to be safety as well as health and it has to be the best services on education and empowerment. Our Prime Minister and our Chief Minister have worked tirelessly with the Ladki Behena Yojana and I'm glad it's impacted lives. All right, thank you. All right, China NC there, uh, who is uh, a candidate from uh, Shiv Sena Eknath Shinde faction. She is a candidate of, uh, uh, you know, she's a debutant candidate, in fact, uh, this time around uh, during assembly elections. She is contesting from Mumba Devi constituency. It's a tough fight uh, as far as China is concerned because she is contesting against an incumbent there. Um, so it remains to be seen how things will pan out, but she is a voter here. Let me once again show you uh, the Malabar Hill uh, constituency, uh, which is an affluent constituency, as I was pointing out. Voters have uh, started pouring in China, being one of the first voters here. Um, as you can see, uh, residents here have uh, uh, started queuing up uh, in uh, small numbers at least, uh, 7 a.m., 7.15 a.m. now, uh, to cast their vote to uh, showcase uh, their uh, democratic exercise. Mangal Prabhat Loda is the candidate here. It is a BJP versus UBT Sena fight as far as this constituency is concerned. In a bit from now, we could see Piyush Goel as well, uh, who will be casting his uh, vote from here. So yes, uh, uh, you know, Mumbai is voting, Maharashtra is voting. As far as Mumbai is concerned, as I mentioned, more than 30 seats going to polls and in Maharashtra 288 and it is going to be a, a, a six-way battle as far as uh, the parties are concerned. Two Senas, two NCPs, we saw a legal fight, identity battle playing out on ground, playing out in the court over the last uh, a couple of years. So this is going to be, uh, you know, a, a, an identity battle of sorts, especially for Uddhav Sena as well as for Sharad Pawar NCP. Uh, first assembly elections uh, since the splits that happened, we did see uh, you know a churning of sorts during Lok Sabha as well, unexpected results during Lok Sabha as, as well. Will that repeat this time during assembly election? That is something that remains to be seen. But certainly Maharashtra is going to be a uh, fascinating uh, you know when the results come out. Uh, very very difficult to predict at this time. Uh, but uh, uh, for now, people have uh, started to come to vote as the polling began 7 a.m. today in Maharashtra. Began in Maharashtra and there was uh, Radhika Ramaswamy, my colleague, speaking to Shaina N.C., uh, the uh, Shiv Sena candidate uh, from uh, Mumbai Devi. She was actually voting in Malabar uh, Hills, a high-profile constituency in uh, Mumbai, which is where Mangal Prabhat Loda, the Guardian Minister of Mumbai, is contesting from extremely high-prestige battle. Piyush Goel, Senior Minister, is expected to vote soon. Going back to Anuj, also, let me remind uh, my viewers that uh, in Nagpur, the RSS Sarsang Chalak, or the Chief uh, Mohan Bhagwat, has also voted. He's uh, perhaps one of the few voters who have come out uh, uh, quite uh, early in the day to cast his vote. Uh, uh, over to you, Anuj. You were telling us about the importance of Eknath Shinde. You're also, uh, uh, you know, also tell us about uh, uh, the 36 most important seats of Mumbai because this is where the battle is. It's going to decide the future of the Senas. Uh, it's also a prestige battle. It's also very important, not just for Maharashtra, but uh, the whole country in some ways curious to know where Mumbai is going to uh, vote. Uh, tell us how critical are these 36 seats and what kind of uh, uh, differences do you see, uh, what kind of political dynamics uh, do you see in these seats? 
You know, when you look at Maharashtra as an electoral playground, one can always differentiate on the basis of different administrative zones. And Mumbai being one of the more important ones, uh, especially because of the presence of, uh, you know, some of the most affluent personalities and also because Mumbai being such an important economic and political centre for the state and especially for the country. Now, uh, the fact is that there are 36 seats here and amongst these 36 seats, the history of Mumbai has been very interesting. You know, when you talk about uh, the erstwhile United Shiv Sena, it has single-handedly dominated Mumbai for a very long period of time. At the same time, we've seen that uh, the Congress, which one once used to have a very strong, so, you know, very good stronghold here in the city, it, well, the, that particular influence has uh, kind of diluted since 2009. We've seen that it's not just that their vote share has gone down, but also the number of seats that they would, uh, you know, uh, contest uh, either in Yuti or in Agadi has also come down by, by a significant margin. Of course, the, the Sena is split. We can see that the, the affiliation of the Mumbaikers uh, and especially of the Marathi Manus with the Thakri still continues to be there but at the same time we've seen that there has been a rise to the Bharatiya Janata Party. Now uh, Shiv Sena has always believed that it is the Shiv Sena, uh, that is the UBT faction that it is their alliance with the BGP which has helped BGP you know grow its stronghold here in the city or in the region of Mumbai but historically speaking Mumbai has always been you know a centre for Shiv Sena and that is why this battle becomes so important. We saw that in Lok Sabha the round one of 2024 elections Shiv Sena UBT won it by a fair margin where they got uh, considerably more number of seats here as compared to Shrindhi Shiv Sena. But this is going to be a more crucial fight uh, because, you know, of course, there are 36 candidates. While on one side, we have, uh, you know, Shiv Sena UBT contesting most number of uh, seats from the Mahavikas Agadi end. On the other hand, it is not Shrindhi Sena, but it is BJP who has taken a lion's share as far as, uh, as far as Mumbai is concerned. And, you know, this entire uh, demographic of Mumbai is also divided into many parts. When you talk about the northern part of the city, there are many, uh, you know, North Indian or especially Gujarati voters, be it areas like Ghat, Kopar, Borivali, etc. And that is where we saw, you know, Amit Shah was campaigning in full throttle. These are considered to be very safe places and safe constituencies for the Bharatiya Janata Party. At the same time, when you talk about the Marathi belt of, uh, of Mumbai, be it Dadar, Varli, Prabhadevi and all of these places along with Mahim, these are the places where Shiv Sena and Shiv Sena Bhavan is also located there. You know, these are the places where Shiv Sena will have a very strong hold. But another player to look out for in this entire region is going to be Raj Thakur is MNS. You know, uh, unlike uh, last few times, we can see that MNS uh, seems to be in a very interesting position this time around, if not to win, but to get a major vote share, especially from uh, Shiv Sena UBT, as the Marathi Manus vote gets divided, not just between two, but be between three parties, considering that Raj Thakri's MNS is also in the fray. When you talk about the southern part of the city, this is the place where the voting turnout usually is very low. And these are the places where the BGP has had a has had an upper hand for quite some time, but there are also places like Baikala, you know, where we can see that, or Mumba Devi, where Congress can come out very strong this time around. So yes, it is a very diverse, uh, you know, uh, plateau here in Mumbai. It's a very diverse place, not just when it comes to uh, people, but also when it comes to electoral choices of the people. And it'll be interesting, you know, whom or which side will these 36 seats yes, go? But also the, the large of number of smaller parties, including MNS, VBA, MIM, that could also be in some ways denting uh, votes, if not really, uh, you know, winning seats. That could be an interesting battle to watch out for. Anuj Rayate there, my colleague, uh, reporting uh, from uh, the Thane. Also, a pitch electoral battle will be witnessed in Jharkhand today, where the Jharkhand Mukti Mocha-led alliance will take on the BJP in the second phase of polling. Remember, the first phase of polling happened on the 13th of November. In Jharkhand seats, voting uh, is uh, going to start today. In fact, uh, the, it's all concentrated in the Santhal Pargana and uh, North uh, Chota Nagpuri. Regions. Remember, these are places in the state which are very critical to the formation of Jharkhand in the uh, first place. So, tribal identity is very important in these places. The JMM led alliance had led in 2019 assembly elections, and then, of course, it uh, really came to power under Heman Sorin. The campaign this time is, was centered completely around tribal identity, with the BJP aggressively pushing its position that inf infiltrators from Bangladesh are responsible for the decline in tribal numbers. We'll have to wait and see how much of that narrative actually uh, got voters to come out and voted vote for the BJP or it's the JMM that is banking on its own version of what tribal identity is and also on welfare promises if that is going to work for the ruling alliance is something that we'll have to watch out for. Uh, going across to my colleague Prabhakar who's in Bukharov, he's waiting for the uh, first family of Jharkhand to come and vote. Uh, 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 Prabhakar, tell us, uh, today is an important election, it's not just the CM but his wife, 
of course babulal marandi very important uh, key faces uh, uh, in the fray this time and also uh, you are uh, uh, you know you are going to uh, talk to you are going to uh, witness the jharkhand's first family come out and vote uh, tell us what is the important of both kalpana sorin and hemant sorin in this election because hemant sorin has been at the center of this fight clearly you know he's projected himself as uh, the biggest tribal leader in the country uh, today is that something that is going to uh, really dent or damage the bjp's prospect or the bjp has other issues uh, that it is banking on Yeah, it's a, today. Uh, as we know, it's a, it's a, the polling is happening on 38 assembly constituencies. It's actually a battle for the tribal heartland. You are talking about Santhal Pargana, which is where the polling would happen today, and it's the Santhal and also uh, the Koyalanchal region, that is the Bokaru and Dhanbad region, where this polling would happen. Now, Santhal happens to be the tribal heartland. That is where the emergence of Jharkhand Mukti Morcha as a political party has happened. That has been the uh, the the, the the political battleground uh, for jharkhand uh, mukti morcha and it's a battle where jmm has to hold on to their forte because uh, that is where they have been that's the the, the strong area and uh, it's it's bjp which has actually tried to float a narrative we have seen uh, talking about uh, they talking about the infiltrators the illegal immigrants so whether that has worked on ground whether it will have any impact on the voters that is that is what will be tested today in this uh, second phase of poll which is happening in jharkhand it would happen in the santhal area big names in fray right from uh, hemant soren to kalpana soren as you were talking about their political stature kalpana soren is the rising star of jmm uh, she has been making news and she has actually been creating stir she is a uh, has been uh, like real show stopper i would say she has been gathering crowd and addressing rallies on her own no without support of uh, her husband hemant soren so uh, she she has been a real star as far as this election campaign for jmm has been is concerned you also have babulal marandi you have uh, sudesh mehto who is a uh, chief of uh, the all jharkhand student union atsu so certainly big names in fray and it would be a testing ground whether the the the, the political narrative of bjp actually has worked on ground or not right uh, prabhakar also help us understand uh, the importance of champai sorin in this because i heard him yesterday saying that uh, santhal parkana will also be won by the bjp this time this has been a difficult area for the bjp tell us how critical is, is are these two regions because they've also been critical to the formation of jharkhand in the firm uh, in the first place and also uh, the importance of champai sorin uh, in this uh, particular phase Yes, see, if you talk about Champai Soren, Champai Soren does not technically hails from the Santhal area. If you talk about Santhal, it is basically the districts like Dumka and then the adjoining districts like Sahib Ganj, Kodda, Pakur. These are the areas which are predominantly tribal dominated. This has, as I told you, this is where the politics of Shibu Soren started, and now his son has taken over Hemant Soren, who is the chief minister here. Talking about Champai Soren. He hails from Jamshedpur area, that is Saraykila. Saraykila is uh, basically a joining uh, constituency of Jamshedpur, and he has been known as uh, the tiger over there. He is known as tiger over there. So he was one guy who was very uh, trusted ally of uh, Sibu Soren, and that was the reason why he was chosen by Hemant Soren in first place when he was actually sent behind bars. So he chose Champai Soren as his replacement. But later we all know how things uh, turned up. So Champai Soren. factor would certainly work but it would have major impact in and around that jamshedpur area that is a kolhan uh, as they call it the kolhan region of uh, jharkhand and that's the reason why uh, champai soren is also known as a uh, kolhan ka tiger that is kolhan's tiger so it would be interesting to watch what impact champai would be able to create in that particular region but talking about today's polling it is primarily happen in santhal which is in and around dumka and also the koyalanchal the industrial belts of jharkhand which is the cities like dhanbad and bokar which has uh, you we all right. know uh, the steel cities and also the the mining area the mining <coughs> regions of jharkhand yeah right thank you prabhakar for joining us with those uh, detail